Well, I don't know about you, but holding one of these in your hand, booting it up and listening to all those glorious 8-bit sounds fills me with a massive amount of nostalgia. I've always had a real soft spot for the soundtracks of those old video games. They had such limited hardware, but they managed to create such amazing music that was just so memorable and still to this day is ingrained in my memory. So in honour of that, today we're going to try and make some 8-bit music. Let's get into it. 8-bit music generally refers to the soundtracks of video games from a bygone era. Also known as chiptune music, in reference to the very rudimentary sound chips that early home and handheld games consoles were equipped with. Because the CPU and onboard memory was so limited back then, it was impossible to play back any meaningful length of sampled music, and let's not forget that digital music wasn't even a thing back then. So the consoles themselves had to generate the sounds, using very primitive methods and with extremely limited flexibility. The actual sounds were limited to a few types of wave, with the ability to adjust just a handful of parameters to shape the sound. And there were only a small number of tracks available, five in the original Game Boy. Each track could usually only utilise one sound and one note at a time. Possibly the easiest and cheapest route to creating 8-bit music today is to download the magical 8-bit plugin from YMCK, which emulates the sounds produced by those original chips. So let's try out this plugin and see if we can create some cool 8-bit music. So I've been playing around with this plugin for a couple of days now, and I've been trying to convert one of my original songs into an 8-bit soundtrack. I've learned a few things along the way, so I thought I'd share a few hints and tips with you to try and help you guys, you know, be able to produce your own 8-bit music as well. So first of all, I would say keep things really simple. Um, so it's easy to get carried away with having loads and loads of tracks, but I think when it comes to these 8-bit sounds, you don't want it to sound too busy. And I think having too much going on can detract from that kind of character that the sound provides. So making a track that's quite simple will be more in keeping with that 8-bit tradition, and I think it'll just sound better as well. Next up, what I've done here is I've, I've captured a piano performance, but I've actually separated out my left hand from my right hand into two separate 8-bit tracks. I had this as one performance originally, it was just recorded on piano, but I found that because there was so much information going on, you know, too, too many notes being played at the same time, that the, the overall sound of the 8-bit didn't sound particularly good at all. So what I've done here is, I think, for piano one, I've got my right hand, so the higher notes, and piano two here, I've got my left hand, so, so the lower notes, and I've got two slightly different 8-bit sounds on each one. So if we bring up the two 8-bit plugins here, we can see that for piano one, I've got a different setting compared to piano two. These two different sounds just help the overall track stop competing with one another. So they sound good together and complement well, rather than sounding much too busy and they just you can't really discern the different notes. So if I solo this first piano part, we can take a look at some of the different sounds that you can get using this plugin. So this is like the pulse slash square wave. But we can change some parameters here. to give a variety of different sounds. And we could even change the type of wave itself. So we could go to a triangle wave, which sounds totally different. Let's go back to our original. And then we've got all these kind of other parameters down here as well. So we've got envelope, sort of attack, decay. Um, I've not really used this bend range much. This auto bend is quite a cool feature, so it gives you... It, it, it allows each note to bend to pitch, and then you can play around with the time. Get some really warbly effects. Or just have a very quick bend. Or you can just turn, set that back to zero, it just shuts it off basically. We could have some vibrato on the notes as well. So basically you can play around with all sorts of different parameters here to get different sounds that you like. I would advise experimenting with different sounds and particularly thinking about what kind of, what wave style would sound best for each part. Because I think that kind of helps really naturally separate things out and it makes the track not sound too busy and you can actually distinguish you know, each part and the different notes that are going on. 
So another cool thing that you can do, apart from having a, a sort of a square wave and a triangle wave, you can select a noise option as well. Um, and what I've done here is use this to kind of simulate a snare type of sound. So if we just play this track here, we can see what we mean. So you can hear that that is just noise, <laughs> but it does kind of simulate that kind of snare sound. And if we play everything together here, we can hear how that snare sound sounds in context with everything else. Just adds sort of another layer and a different depth to the overall track. So in the normal version of Lucidity, there's a part in the song that has got a, a delay effect on it, uh, which is this part here. I didn't want to use a delay effect. I wanted to be in keeping with the tradition and just use the 8-bit sounds. So what I did here to sort of cheat is I kind of duplicated that track and just shifted it along the timeline slightly. So you've got uh, one note playing just after the other note. I used two slightly different sounds on the plugins and I panned one fully left and one fully right. So then we've got this delay effect without using a delay pedal. And with everything else, that sounds like this. Kind of cool. So this is essentially like the bass track here. The original sound was a double bass. Uh, and I've used a really gritty sounding pulse wave, square wave here, um, to kind of give it that, like a really distorted bass type of feel. So it sounds a bit like this. Which, yeah, by itself doesn't sound much, but when you kind of, when you add in the piano parts. Just kind of helps to really fill out that low end and gives the overall track some atmosphere. Conversely, with these violin parts here, they're called violin parts because they're originally violins, but um, just 8-bit sounds here. Um, I've used a different kind of sound. So I've used a square wave again here, but for both of these tracks on the, the duty setting, I've set it to 50%. So whereas with the double bass, it was set to 12 and a half, which gave it this really gritty, distorted sound. Increasing this duty parameter seems to give the sound a much, a much kind of sweeter roundness to it. So this sounds a bit more like this. So it's a much less gritty sound, much smoother. So for this chorus section here, this just adds these really nice little elements going on on the left and right. These are panned hard left and right. And let's just add these other parts in. This has been really fun and a real nostalgia trip for me, taking me back to my childhoods and remembering all those great 8-bit sounds and soundtracks from those retro games. One thing that I've realised from this process is that sometimes having limitations as a musician can be really great for your creativity. Just working with the things that are available to you means that you can just maximise the best of those things rather than having endless or limitless options. I think that's one of the reasons why the soundtracks to those original games like Pokemon and Mario are just so memorable. The people that made them had such limitations just based around the hardware that was being used to create the sounds, and therefore they had to use sort of every ounce of their creativity in order to produce something that sounded really great. Anyway, this was a really fun little project. I've got more videos like this in the pipeline, so stay tuned. I hope you enjoy the final track, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.